So we're starting another project and uh, I'm gonna actually do two of them so you can probably figure out fairly quickly that we're doing these little flare side Ford trucks. This is a little matchbox Ford and they they call these and I may get bit in the butt when I say this. I think this is a bullnose Ford. With the brush guard on there, I can't tell if it is a bullnose or if it's the 7879 style. The way this front grill comes down here on the side, I'm thinking it's a 7879 style. So it may not be a bullnose like I was expecting it to be. With it being an 82, I thought, oh yeah, it's going to be a bull nose. But I've not actually seen one of these with the uh, um, brush guard off of it. So I'm going to start off calling it a bull nose, but it may not actually be. So the reason I've got two of these, we're going to make a good one out of all the parts and then... I'm going to do actually two of this truck and um, whichever one turns out better. You know, I mean, I don't know which one's going to turn out better, but um, I'm going to do two of them. And the way this project started was one of my friends and I were talking and her favorite color is purple. So I sent her a picture of one of these. This is a newer style Ford flare side and it's purple I'm not gonna do the silver on uh, this truck here I think it's got enough stuff that's gonna be chrome along it that the silver is not gonna not gonna be anything special and um, couldn't really find one of these although there's a real junky one running around Logan Sport but couldn't find any of these for sale but I did find a bullnose step side. Granted, it was not purple. It ended up being forest green. And, um, uh, so this one's an 82 F100. That's the last year for the F100. Um, they made the F250 and the F100 at the same time for a few years. Anyway, this one's definitely a bull nose. Um, you know, it's got the uh, aftermarket rally style wheels on it, and it's more of a true step side, uh, or Ford, as Ford calls them, flare sides. And um, it was really hard to find one of these that was a automatic, and also one that was close by. Um, a lot of these were manuals, which would be okay for me. Not quite what she was wanting. Um, and she ended up not getting it anyhow, but tried really hard and ended up finding, at least found one. And um, so basically what we were, we what we had talked about doing to this truck, had she got it, is what we're going to do to these little die cast trucks here. Um, so, they're the same. One's got real yellowed windows, so I think I'm going to, I don't think purple and gold are going to go well together on this truck. So, I think I'm going to tint the windows in one of these trucks. This one's got real clear, nice windows. So, it's got a little scratch in it. No, oh, that's a crack in it. But, um... So, yeah, I think I'm still going to use the use this windshield... Um, cut, we're cutting, we're getting rid of the roll bar. I'm going to keep the little fog lights. Uh, the tail lights on this truck, these trucks, the tail lights are not mounted on the bumper. They're mounted on the sides of the truck. So we're going to change that. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do about one of them because it's missing the tail light. But, um, so these both have the special 620 racing <laughs> wheels on them that Matchbox used and I had thought about 
these are very authentic looking Ford wheels. They only they didn't put these on all of their trucks, but a select few they had. And then I matched up these wheels. These are kind of oversized wheels for this truck, but I matched them up to the regular size wheels that some of these castings had. These are way, way, way too small, even if I put bigger tires on them. So our little Indian's truck is going to keep its original wheels. This is made by White Rose Collectibles, and I think they're the only ones that make a Ford truck with these wheels. Um, I really like that truck. I didn't really want to take this apart, but for this project, I thought maybe I'll do one that's got the special wheels on it. But we're not going to do that because they don't fit, and these wheels are going to work for what we're going to do. So the nice thing about these trucks, nothing's missing other than that tail light on this one. Nothing's missing that we need. One's got a cracked brush guard. Uh, this one had a rollover and mashed the headache rack. So, and hopefully the back axle just came out of the clip on this and that's why it's all screwed up and doesn't roll right. Because these roll really good except for that when you can see the wheels are just dragging. So I'm going to take these apart and see what we're working with. Alright, so I'm a little bit interested to see. I've not ever had one of these castings apart before. But I know there are several pieces. Ooh, they are different. <laughs> Alright, that is not a bullnose grill. That's not square. That is oblong shaped. This is this is an older truck than I thought it was, but that's all right. We're gonna make it work. Um, might modify the grills on these a little bit. Uh, windshield. That's actually a really nice windshield, except for that crack. Uh, so this is the casting we're working with. These ones are cool. They have the emblem custom. They say F-150 even though we're building an F-100. Um, still kind of cool though that the emblem's cast in there. Uh, we got a license plate. These tailgates are supposed to say Ford, but um, that's okay. This one has got a license plate on it. At least it's got something there. It's not a naked tailgate. Uh, here's the running gear, got your brush guard, which we're going to shave off of there, but I'm going to try to save it, um, and the bumper and the hitch and all that stuff, oh, and the steps, that's all one piece, your grill, your interior, your roll bar, your, oh, those aren't the steps, these are the steps for the bit, and then the, uh, side pipes, that's all a piece. It's kind of interesting how the old Matchbox trucks are put together. Here's what that roll bar is supposed to look like. Although we're going to lose that anyhow. Um, hmm. Was it this one that was rubbing or was it the other one? I don't know. They're not pushed out of the... Hmm. It must be this one. Oh, the bars. I'll have to mash that, take that bar out and bend it a little bit. It's it's pushed up, and so the wheels, that's why they rub. But uh, this one hasn't really been pushed much. It's still got a groove in the center of the tire. I don't know if you can, it's hard to see that, but that means this wasn't really pushed around too much. Anyway, this one's hit something. It's got a bent brush guard. And it's got one tail light, but we're going to make all that stuff work. Like I said, we're going to make a real nice one, and then we're going to make a little extra one. And depending on how the paint turns out on the first one, it's going to depend on what I do with the second one. I'm wanting this to be kind of a royal purple, but I want it to be real shiny. And I think what I'm going to do is do a silver base coat and then put purple over it because it's not a solid purple. Now one issue with this casting, it has a 
little pore in it that goes all the way through. And I noticed that when it was together, and that's why I actually bought a second one. Because I thought that's going to be kind of hard to fill that. But Yeah, so looking at these, I guess the bodies are rounded a little bit along the side. They do have the dent side in them, but so do the bullnose trucks. So, not a bullnose truck like I thought it was, but I'm thinking if we tape all this off and paint the sides, <laughs> ignore my dirty cut fingernails I've been working on oily old trucks. Uh, I'm thinking if we paint this side here, oh, paint this side here on this plastic purple to match the truck, we won't have any issue with, um, you know, something looks wrong or right or whatever. So these get to go in the paint stripper and um, then we have all these parts that we get to mix and match and decide what wheels are the least worn out on the sides. It looks like probably these, the letters are pretty good on. And I think these, yeah. Although that one's pretty nice, but I'm not gonna, since they're going back on the same trucks, I'm not cutting in tubing axles and all that crap. Um, this one needs cleaned off. I think what I'm gonna do see the front bumper is going to be chrome and a lot of times the rear bumpers on these weren't chrome this style of bumper wasn't chrome they were painted silver but i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do yet uh, i know the tail lights i don't know if i ever finished what i was going to say these tail lights are going on the sides of the truck like they're supposed to but i can't do that until everything's painted because the housing of the tail lights is supposed to be chrome and then the lens is red. So this is our interior that we're working with. Basic, but the seats have nice insert, you know, in the cushions. Like I said, I'm going to try to save the KC lights. And on this one, I'm going to try to save the roll bar. This isn't going to be very good for anything, I don't think. Although, they might make some type of good bumper or something. Uh, so... I'm going to snip those off and get all that sanded flat because that's an important piece that goes I won't be able to get this back together right now but there we go that completes the bed of the truck so that's kind of an important piece kind of like on the Dodge that we did earlier uh, by the time this is all done it, that will probably be a couple months ago because I've been busy enough. And I don't know if this is a variation that had a gold window or if that's because it's yellowed evenly everywhere. I really don't think it's faded. So I don't think putting this in anything and leaving it out in the sun is going to fix it because I think it's actually that color. So we may tint that one. This one's going to be clear. I don't really know what color we're doing the interior yet. I'm trying to come up with what interior colors go with white because I am not screwing around. I don't like per I I don't like white white interiors look really good, but they're just not practical. They're hard to keep clean. When they get old, they're kind of gray. But gray's kind of a basic color. This isn't a basic truck, so. We're going to figure something out. We have modified the grills on both of these trucks so that they are more representative of a bullnose than the previous body style. Um, this one I just see needs a little bit more straightening up on the passenger side. but um, And we did end up using part of that crappy roll bar. I think all we have left are the lights. Oh no, not quite. But uh, I was able to save 
the brush guards when I cut them off. So, um, that's good. I can use those on other projects, and I have two of them. Oops. So, that's exciting. Uh, this is what I've been doing. I kept the fog lights, because I like fog lights on cars. So, I kept the... I wish this would focus so you could actually see it. New. Okay. Well, anyways, I kept the fog lights and sanded around them, which was kind of hard, because, uh, of how they are. But, uh, they came out fairly good on both trucks. This, I've, I've got a set of stuff that's not so well, and then I've got a set of stuff that came out pretty well. So, at this point, we have a good and a bad, and, well, not so good. Our bad is going to, or our not so good, is going to be the one with the hole in it. And then, I don't think there's any casting imperfections in this cast, specific casting here. I don't see any. Now, once I get these two trucks paint stripped, I'm curious, this one's got a little bit of oxidization on the corners right here. Um, that's why the paint's bubbled up. So I'm curious to see what these look like with no paint. Uh, there doesn't appear to be too many casting lines in this thing, which is good because there's a lot of room for casting lines to be due to the nature of the curvature. I'm seeing a casting line on the top of the cab. Yeah. And it's not a hard line. But it'll be something that needs addressed. Uh, so yeah, we have extra parts now. So that's cool. Um, so everything is going well so far. So, they're back from the paint stripper jar. I have not wire wheeled them yet, so they have uh, little bits of paint. The paint in the bed, I did not expect it to come out very well, or come off, because it's very thin. And when it's very thin, it normally does not uh, strip off of there very well. Uh, usually the thicker paint comes off better. Which, if you think about it, kind of makes sense because there's more substance to the thicker paint. You can kind of see the die cast through this really thin paint. Because I know from painting, I like trucks, so I paint lots of die cast trucks. <laughs> but trucks are hard to paint because you got to get down in the corners of the bed and the sides of the bed and it's really hard to not screw them up because then when you're doing all this then you get too much paint on the outside and trucks are tough to paint so uh kind of expected that especially um because of the age that they are so but these things got some crude casting lines around the windows uh this one did the same thing but everywhere else the paint came off this one is not oxidized too badly. Actually, it looks almost like I already went over it with the wheel, but I haven't. Um, they surely have the same, yeah, they have the same number. I figured they would, because they're the same thing. But for some reason, I was thinking this didn't say 53. So there's our little hole in the front of this one. And these trucks are tall enough, they don't fit very well in the uh, um, drawers. So this truck, this is actually the better truck, it doesn't have the hole in the fender. But it's got a heck of a line on that windshield frame right there. 
Got a chunk out of it, and then it goes down. I mostly got rid of the casting lines around the tops of the doors. The stuff that I could see is mostly what was there. Uh, the fenders don't have any casting lines on them, which is surprising, because they've got a lot of contours. Uh, nothing on the bed. The edges of the bed are as good as I could get them. They're not great. But they're at least the same height now. <laughs> they weren't before I filed on them. I don't know if I showed this or not. Got rid of the roll bar last night. I know I showed the grills. And kept the fog lights. Because I like fog lights. And then I realized that one of the bars on that brush guard keeps a gap from showing between the bumper and the grill. And um, when I had the truck all together, you could see light coming through that gap there. If I hold it right, you can kind of see. And so I used that roll bar, cut it up, and going to have a little chrome bar going between those two fog lights on both trucks. So I'm doing some work here on several things. I'm fixing the handle on my mug and um, test fitting some pieces here on our trucks. The Krylon paint, I didn't realize when I started painting it, happened to be candy paint, which was perfectly fine. Um, I just didn't know that. So these took more layers than I thought that they were going to. No big deal. Uh, the, we only have one major paint flaw overall with both of these, and that one's pretty easy to see. On that back fender there. Looks like it had a bubble and it popped. But, that's, like I said, there's a number one and a number two. And I, next, I texted my friend and I said, you know, if you had that purple truck, what color interior would you want in it? And, um, you know, like a lot of times people will do, you know, purple and lavender or purple and white or something like that. Anyway, I asked her what color and she sent me this. Um... Which is, to me, reminded me of the color of the computer error screen. But, um, that's what she wanted, and I had a relatively close color to that, so that's what I painted hers. And she, we were talking about stuff, and she wanted, you know, she liked stuff being unique, and so... She's going to get the orange windscreen, windows, windows and all that stuff. Um, the purple and orange really don't look that bad together. I'm curious, once the paint dries on that blue interior though, what color is that blue going to look like through this orange? The other one's clear. That's one that's going to go on mine. Um, I don't have the inside of the wheels chromed or the beauty rims, but... I did get the white stamped on the tires. It didn't come out real great, but it still looks better than it being black. That's probably about the best one. That one come out real good. Um, obviously, as you can see, got the chrome done. The only issue with that chrome is it shows all the imperfections in the plastic. Which, um, some of it is kind of hard to to really see. I also cleared up the mess of plastic that is between the back fender and the bumper on these little plastic chassis. I know they're so these bumpers don't break off, but they don't look right on these trucks because they're not actually there on the real ones. Oh, I also broke the side of this bumper off and had to glue it, so you can kind of see the the crack in it. But overall, they came out fairly well. 
and um, once I once the paint dries on the interiors, I did my interior green. I thought, you know what? If we're gonna do some crazy colors, let's do some crazy colors. So our trucks are all done, and they're all ready to be put back together. Now on the stock version of this toy truck I know I said already the tail lights are on the bumper and on the real truck they're not supposed to be they're supposed to be roundabouts where these are at which these are the tail lights from these castings I just cut them off and glued them onto the back of the truck where they're supposed to be instead of putting them on the bumper keeping them on the bumper I also did some chrome detailing which you can see a heck of a lot better in person it's just kind of blending in with that metallic on the uh, camera but it's around the windows and got the Ford letters on the hood good little sunroof thing emblems so if you remember one of these bases was missing a tail light. So what could I do about that? Well, I wish these were glued a little more evenly. I just, I just think this is the one that fell off and when I glued it back on it wasn't so even. But um anyhow, this piece here you'll know this was actually the, my favorite one to glue on. It had a bit of what I would say was a mount, you know, on the back of the tail light. That made it real easy to glue that one on there. That what that is it's from one of these big pens here. That is the clip on this pen here, and then that clip is cut in half, you know, like right along the the mold line here and then about midway through the little body of our character now I don't know why they didn't mold the tail lights into the casting because matchbox does have the ability to do that as you can see with the 56 Ford and they had the ability when they made this as well because the 56 Ford casting this is a 50 yeah 56 it's been around for a while they made this casting I know they made it in the 90s uh, this one doesn't have the first year it just it was re remade in 2018 recast I guess but my point being they have the ability to cast the tail lights into the casting and make it look nice so why on this one were they in the bumper? Well, I don't know. But it's time to put this thing back together. And um, I, I will do my best to do this on camera once I get a flat screwdriver, not a Phillips, out of my little thing over here. Alright. I always kind of have a struggle with... Uh, rebuilding some of these things on camera yeah it's one thing to yep, get down in there. I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this on camera because I, I have to reach around the camera you know and have to be careful not to pull this metal thing up or pry it up too far and bend it and reaching around the camera to do things like that yeah I'm just going to shut the camera off. Wheels are on. The rest of this I think I'm capable of doing with the camera in my way. Windshield goes in. Then the interior. And keep in mind that when I, before I cut the uh, brush guard off of these chassis, 
I thought these were bullnose Fords and then come to find out later on they were um, what they call dent side Fords this the 78 79 style I'll snap that together off camera but um, there's what it's going to look like um, my point in retelling that was uh, that's why the sides of these this this whole grill part should be aluminum but I did the sides and the tops purple for the only the only reason for that was that um, I'm I was going with trying to make the dent side look more like a bull nose so I just kind of tried to blend everything together a little better maybe it didn't work so well but I've never had messed with one of these castings before so I didn't know and um, it's hard to tell from just looking at the casting that it's a dent side versus a bull nose so put this guy back together it goes back together the same way that one does Well, they're all done. And for using a paint that I've never used before, and painting a casting that I have never painted before, I think all in all these came out fairly well. I'm not super happy. The, this paint has several defects in it if you look around these real close. But all in all... I did fix this tail light because it was driving me crazy. All in all, I can live with how they came out, both of them. Um, they're uh, maybe not ex as great as what I was hoping they would turn out. But um, I'm not disappointed in them by any means. It's the exact color purple that I wanted. And that was kind of just by luck of the draw that it was the right color purple. So, like I was saying, turning a dent side in, or yeah, turning a dent side into a bullnose Ford, the turn signals aren't as long or in the right place. So, I just kind of did what I thought I needed to do. And I guess it came out okay. I I guess these aren't done yet. For these go on the turntable, I have to paint the the side markers on these trucks. But other than that, they're all done. I detailed the mirror and the windshield wipers. And I don't know why I did this, because you don't see the bottom of it ever. But I did the axles and the drive shafts. And the transfer case. Um, with our clear windshield and our green interior that you can't see. Flashlight. Oops. Not that flashlight. Doesn't work. You'll see it. You saw it before. It was dark green. The blue, unfortunately... It looks rather green as well because of that orange windshield that's in it. Or it looks like blue plastic that has aged and turned yellow. Oh well. <laughs> she wanted it blue and I painted it blue. It just maybe doesn't quite look as blue as it did. So I'm not sure why there's such a big gap. Um, the rivet holes are all lined up. I couldn't actually make this, put this truck back together with crooked rivet holes because it has two in the back. There's two in the back lined up. The the. So I'm not really sure why there's that big gap. 
Um, and I'm not sure. Not sure why the the bumper looks cro crooked to me too. I glued this thing together in the vise and it, it popped back apart. So I still have to try to get hers fixed. I guess hers hasn't decided it wants to stay together yet. Hers rolls though. Mine rolls if I pick up on the back of it. I uh, couldn't figure out how to fix that. I was going to stick something on top of that metal thing to hold the axle down, but that didn't work. So. That's okay. So most of my customs don't get pushed around too much because um, I find that they seem to chip easier than the the thick Chinese paint that the uh, manufacturers put on these from the factory. So, you know, they just kind of sit and look pretty. I like them to roll, though. And it does roll. It just doesn't roll quite as well as this one does. So tell me, guys, in the comments what you think of these, and I'll get them on the turntable. Um, I like the white letters on these uh, tires. And I just painted the inside of the wheels chrome. Uh, I was kind of... I had, I had debated on using these wheels or different wheels, but I think these wheels look pretty good. Like, comment, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next video.